1879, and it will be changing of the guard who will stride on and claim the early lead. And Frankie de Tori is going to put the mare free wind right at the back of the field. He's already conceded six lengths to Ryan Moore on changing the guard through the very early stages. Now, pile driver, first time on a race course for about three quarters of a year, and he's really lit up. He is reefing and pulling, and he's just in behind in third place as West Wind blows, has moved through on the outside of changing of the guard. Now, at the start, PJ McDonald put on a pair of gloves to try and get an extra grip on this very hot and sultry day, but at the moment, he's having his arms extended in third on Pile Driver, who really is keen and very happy to be back at the races, but he's not helping his chance here as they go around Swinley Bottom. Doville Legend is racing in fourth place, then in fifth is Ardacan, racing on the inside of Free Wind, and it is now Grand Alliance who is at the back of the field. So they're racing on towards the halfway point in the Group 2 Hardwick Stakes, and it's West Wind Blows and Jamie Spencer. He's out in front by over two lengths now to change the guard, and Ryan Moore in second position. Still keen is Pile Driver under PJ McDonald in third place. Dover Legend and Danny Muscat in fourth. Ardacan, James McDonald in fifth. Frankie Latore, the white colours on Free Wind in sixth, and it's William Buick and Grand Alliance still at the back of the pack. They continue to climb, and they're racing now on towards the final half mile of the Hardwick, and West Wind Blows is travelling smoothly. Much better than Change of the Guard, who's already been pushed along by Ryan Moore. Pile Driver still keen on the bit, racing in third. Free Wind now making a sweeping move around the outside in fourth. Doville Legend is all tucked up, but looking for racing room. Ardacan will take the scenic route round the outside, and at the back is Grand Alliance. They're in line for home. Change of the Guard, the first off the bit. He's still there pitching. Pile Driver on the outside. West Wind Blows, however, still just has the lead. Danny Muscat is screaming, screaming for racing room on Doville Legend, and he can't get it out. Free Wind is flattened out, and now up they enter the final said that he'll come on for the run that he might blow up and he might only be 75 percent if this is 75 percent of him i can't wait to see 100 percent in king george day he pulled fiercely hard he's won by a length and a half west wind blows in second in third change of the guard and possibly unlucky in fourth doville legend who was all tucked up but he could never get out of bed a first ever winner at royal ascot for pj mcdonald on pile driver but my goodness, there were some heart-stopping moments. First up, he was so free in the race on his return from the long absence. Then in the straight, the stewards will have a look at it, Jason. What a remarkable horse this is, yeah, though. Yeah, he, you know, we, we saw the win last year where he snaked his way up the straight, where, you know, it was left, right, all over. Watch BJ. Pulls it through to his right, and he's going to duck immediately away. Now, he actually, he does straighten his range, but he pulls it through. Watch this for a duck. That, he's gone all my word that it's he's so hard to ride and, and and the problem is you're trying to get that extra gear out of him stewards will look at that um, I don't think that they will turn it around but um, because PJ is such an experienced rider they'll think that possibly a little bit more anticipation on his part here he hits the front and you can see the stick in his right hand, then through to the left as he duck left. <laughs> I feel sorry for PJ because he's, he's, he's all over the place. He is a, he's a little monkey pile driver, so talented, but you can see he's quirky, he was keen, he then ducks and dives when he hits the front, but the ability is all there and it's not easy. It is accidental, PJ's done everything he could to try and stop it, but like you say, could he have predicted it? Well, that's what the shoes are going to ask. That's tricky, though. Well, yeah, it's, it's, just yeah. when he pulls it through again here, I think that he should have known that he was already aiming that way. And oh, I, I, feel I think like he was quite clearly going to win he anyway. Wasn't pulled he? it through and just maybe tapped him down the shoulder because the horse is clearly reacting to when he is tapped behind the saddle. Been really, really quickly underneath him, didn't it? But uh, there he is. He can tell us about him snaking up the track.
PJ's already giving William Muir uh, the latest debrief, but I'm going to jump in here if that's all right, PJ. Obviously, there's a bing bong. You can tell us why. Look, at, he's a horse that when he hits the front, he always runs around, you know. Um, and um, I thought when I came on the outside with him, he'd be okay. But as soon as I gave him a dig one side, he's went one way and then the other. But it just goes to show you how much ability he has that he's not concentrating on running a straight line. But, you know, um, obviously I've straightened him up each time. But, he, he, you know, I think he's a very comfortable winner. Nobody can take this away from him. I'm going to say, you know as well as I do, and as most racing people will know, that going to keep the race. Yes, but look, at, let's not talk about that now. It's about... See this, I haven't sat on this horse since the King George. I know nothing about him. The lads have just said, you keep away from him. You're better off not complicating things. Dead rides him every day, does everything with him. Um, and he absolutely loves this horse, and you can tell by him. But by God, what's him um, performance to get this fella back today. And tell me about the early part of the race. How are those forearms? Yeah, I was... When Ryan went forward, I thought, I'm going to get into a lovely pitch. And he kind of relaxed for a bit. But as soon as Jamie came down the outside, we do know he's a strong traveller. Um, and I was a little bit worried for a bit there, but I managed to get him back and got him semi into a rhythm. He was still doing a little bit too much for me most of the way around. Um, but um, I was going that well. I kind of went inside because he hasn't ran for a year and I didn't want to go out around the outside on him. And we know what he's like in a finish anyway. So. PJ, the King George was something else. And I remember when you won it, you said, Christian, I've just won the King George. But it, it feels like you're getting almost as big a buzz about winning this race. This is Royal Oscar. I like, you know what I mean? I'm 41 years of age now. I've been coming here a bit. But you just need a good horse coming here. You can't come here unless you've got a good animal. And whatever happens now, I'm a Royal Oscar winner. I'm going to ask this man here, William. What are you thinking right now about what this horse has just done? attack about half an hour ago but I think it probably was indigestion this is a hell of a performance because I know how much he'll improve us here well, you know what I'm like do I shout and talk yes I've talked him down all the way because I knew he will improve for this race that man on the other side Jetta he's ridden him every single day him no, when he was on holiday just one rode him Chad puts him in the spar every day. He's just in the spar, out of the spar, in the spar. The work the boys have done, just phenomenal. My vet, I can nearly cry now. My vet has been just sensational because we couldn't find out what was wrong with him. But it all happened in Saudi and this took us still now to get it right. William, I'm going to let you walk in and enjoy every moment of it. Thank it's you. one that you won't forget. Fantastic stuff. Thank you. A serious bit of training, this, for a horse that's been off the track for 336 days. The King George winner, now a Hardwick Stakes winner. Here again, here again. And PJ will talk a great game in the stewards. I can guarantee you that. The exchange is suggesting he's got no chance of losing it. And he's had a torrid year, PJ, to this point, hasn't he, Megan? Yeah, he really has. He deserves this so much. You know, there's been complications with Dan Thoroughbreds, who he's been retained to for the last couple of seasons. And, you know, it's been hard for PJ. He had a few weeks off to try and get his contacts back up and, and really start again. But William Muir turned back to PJ last year and the King George he actually won Pearl Driver's Maiden on board came back and rode him again a couple of years years later in the King George and now a Hardwick at Royal Alaska I mean it's amazing three from three is a really amazing story and PJ deserves this more than anything we heard from Guy and Roger before the race the owners who've just won this extraordinary journey hopefully we'll hear from them again in a minute they actually met at Oxford University Roger always says it was a hundred years ago when they met talented golfers they were both golf Blues. Here's the provisional result, which we don't think will change. Pile driver seven to two in the end. West Wind blows finish second at 13 to two, changing of the guard uh, in further. But frustratingly, there were only seven runners each way wise, with Hookham coming out this morning.